Okay, there we go. Hello everyone, how's it going? Team here, and this is BXGS weekly coding live stream. We are doing more proposals, finally, we're getting back to all of that stuff, and uh, we're gonna trim through those 14 proposals that are left real quick, hopefully in the next couple of, no, not couple of weeks, that's impossible, but hopefully in the next couple of months, let's put it this way. Um, but yeah, so today we're gonna work on the two proposals that are currently on the top by the user votes. First one being the typings in JavaScript, uh, TypeScript and flow and all that kind of stuff. I think we're just going to pick TypeScript in this case. And the second one is the React um, reusable React components. I mean, it's called library here, but I guess we're talking about React component. In this case, at least from the description. So this was what, what, let me try that again. This is what we're going to do. We're going to take, we're going to make a React component. It is going to be published on NPM and going to have uh, all the things that you would expect from a component and is going to be coded using TypeScript, right? So I don't think I uh, like flow. Okay, so before we get started, let's talk about the typings in general and uh, answer the questions when you choose TypeScript, when you choose flow, right? So the thing about it is that um, flow was primarily made to be added to existing code bases, right? So if you have a large code base, it is really hard, or it actually it was really hard to migrate it to TypeScript right away because TypeScript up until a certain point did not actually have support for gradual migration. So you could not have like partially JavaScript files and then partially TypeScript files. Now you can actually do that. So there's not that much difference anymore in this kind of area. But before when the TypeScript was just released, there was no such option. So the flow was sort of the reasonable option where you could um, optionally add annotations, right? And um, wait a second, flow, Facebook, let me just open the docs. So basically, yeah, the idea is that all you have to do to add flow is just add one tiny annotation to your file, which is this comment, which is slash slash add flow. And that's it, then the flow will do the work and tell you, hey, you know, this is the thing that, um, hey, you know, you're calling it with a string, so maybe you wanted to actually call it with a number because you are multiplying things here. So it has like type inference and all the things that you would expect. Right, and this is exactly why Facebook created it, right? But um, as TypeScript evolved over the time, we now have uh, version 3.1, I think. Um, they've basically added an option to, uh, also, was it 3.1? Yes, it's 3.1, okay. So they also added an option to migrate projects from JavaScript to TypeScript gradually. So which means that you can actually start with a JavaScript project and just gradually migrate some files to TypeScript and keep the other files as JavaScript, right? TypeScript compiler will still understand that and you can still use that and it basically works more or less the same way as flow, but you just have to rename the files to TypeScript. So it also has like type inference and all the things that you would expect. Um, so this is the uh, core differences between them. I honestly have not touched flow since it was released and uh, TypeScript, well, I mean, I looked at the newer versions, but I'm not much of a, you know, strict typing guy and I'm not using the strictly typed languages that much. But uh, we're gonna use it anyway, so why not? Uh, let's talk about what is that, what it brings, advantages and disadvantages. Okay, so advantages of uh, TypeScript and fall. Well, you define your types explicitly, right? And if you're not doing this, uh, I mean, in some cases they might be referred, so it's gonna be okay. But most of the cases you have to explicitly state what kind of return type you have and what kind of parameter types are passed in. So what it brings is, well, first of all, it's gonna be type safety. Obviously this is the thing about the strict typing, right? And the second thing is that uh, it's gonna bring you a better autocomplete. So this is actually one of the um, cool features about the VS code is that um, the TypeScript compiler or parser can actually work on the JavaScript files now, right? And this is exactly what the VS code uses to give you this really cool auto suggestion. So the VS code IntelliSense is essentially built on top of the TypeScript compiler. Um, would you recommend using interfaces? Uh, that highly depends for what, right? Like 
it's it's you know the, the, it's it's the same as with any other topic in the software development you don't have an absolutely bad or an absolutely good thing right so there's something that might be suitable for very small number of use cases and the other things that might be suitable for almost everything but there's no like absolutely evil bits in there they are in the language for a reason it's the same with interfaces they are in there for a reason there is cases when you would want that um i think i used them quite successfully when i needed to implement the dynamic plugin system so when you define the plugins as interfaces that have a specific methods that you can call and then whatever the plugin does in those methods is like you know do whatever you want so in those cases the interfaces would be for example a good uh, thing to use in other like again you know it's, it's sort of the thing that you have to figure out for yourself do you really need them or not um okay uh, coming back to advantages and disadvantages so yes as i said advantages is the typings and then the type safety and uh better code suggestion and uh like this is the top level right so the disadvantage is that you have to write those types so this is like uh, and you have to bear the um complexity of you know additional like build steps or whatever if you don't have that yet if you don't have any webpack or babel or whatever you will have to have um, some sort of a compilation set up to convert the TypeScript to actually JavaScript that can be executed in the engine, right? So this is definitely a disadvantage. That's uh, that's about it, basically. It's like, it is, you would also have to learn the syntax, right? Because it's slightly different from what you write in JavaScript because you have to add those type annotations, but it's not extremely hard. So kind of small disadvantage, I guess. Okay, um, so we talked about that alternatives to typescript and flow that's a really good question actually i honestly don't know if there's any alternatives to that uh what is the best alternative to uh i know like there is the dart but that's not really an alternative to typescript right so it's not really a type javascript it's like um 20 alternatives to typescript that is interesting Hey, I have a big problem. Can you suggest me a project to build? I don't have any ideas. My stack is React, TypeScript, Node, GraphQL. Any suggestions? Build something that you find useful. Like, do you have anything that every time you go online, you think, man, I'm missing this thing to collect my links or to, you know, do something? Is, is that like, if something like this comes to your mind, just sit down and build it. If not, then there is uh, like, there's a ton of um, pretty cool links on a product hunt like just take any of them and copy it and try to build it with your stack that's always a good exercise and additionally there is always um there's always those websites uh, let me try if i don't think i've uploaded this but there are basically those you know those collections i wish there was i wish yeah I, yeah there you go there's the website i'm talking I wish there was an app for, um, why is it loading so slow? There you go. Um, so it's basically a collection of tweets that where people wish for something. So you just go here, you look at those things and uh, build it. Little Alchemy 2 is brilliant. It's like really cool and also really great like JavaScript coding in there. Okay, um, coming back to this thing. Alternatives, yeah, we had this 20 alternatives to TypeScript. I'm really curious. Kotlin, that is not an alternative to TypeScript. Um, Elmlang, well, kinda, yeah, that is true. That is kind of an alternative. But again, you know, it's not exactly just typing. It's also like a purely functional language. C -sharp, yeah, okay, this is bullshit, you know? <laughs> Seems like there's no really alternatives to a TypeScript and Flow, at least not, a, not at this moment. So we're gonna skip this. Uh, why it's important and why not? Well, I would say that typings are important in either extremely complex projects or in very strict projects that don't accept failure. Uh, what do you mean by standalone React component? I mean exactly what it means, standalone React component, a component that we're gonna build and publish on NPM and that you can NPM install component and then use it in your project as a you know third party thing. So like uh, React window, for example. Yeah, that's a good example. So this thing is a standalone component, right? You import this fixed size list thing and then you use it and this is exactly what we want to build. Okay, um, right. So I think we covered most of them. We're going to talk about prop types when we start building. Um, trends. That's actually a good question. 
How are the TypeScript and, and uh, TypeScript? So I guess NPM trends is what we want. There was this chart website. There you go. I guess we want to look at the by the install uh, thing. So let me just allow my JavaScript. What I want to build, I don't know yet. So we're going to figure out what we're going to build along the way. But let's just uh, compare the trends. So we're going to look at the TypeScript and we're going to look at the flow. Um, Oh man, I think the flow is not actually here. Oh yeah, there's a flow bin. Okay. Yeah, TypeScript is dominating as as ever. I'm not sure that's like a proper numbers because flow I believe is typically goes as as binaries, but I'm I would guess that TypeScript is dominating like yeah, this this thing is just huge now. And I mean, you know, deservedly so. Microsoft did a lot of really good work on it. Okay, cool. So we looked at all of that, we're going to use TypeScript and um, we're going to use TypeScript to build reusable react component, right? So I don't know what what's do you guys do you guys have any ideas what component to build? Like we can just go for something very simple and uh, make sure we do everything right, like, you know, adding tests, server, automated publishing, or we can make a more complex thing and then pfft, see what we can basically squeeze in in terms of the best practice approaches. Calendar, no, that is not simple. <laughs> I'm not not ever I'm going to build another calendar. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. Um, right, let me think we can build um, we can build what can we build something not too simple, but also not drag and drop that is also not simple. That is that is a very complex thing. And I mean, uh, there's this react beautiful DND &D thing, which is I think version nine now or something. And um, just just look at the size of the thing and the amount of work that went into this, there's 50 releases, and they're still updating it pretty much. Yeah, 902. There you go. This is a lot of work. <laughs> Um, my last project was calendar. I mean, that depends on the type of the calendar you you build, but working with dates and time in JavaScript is like, oh my God, I don't really want to think about that. And then you add time zones and then it becomes a pain in the ass. So let's, let's just stick to something simpler. Um, all right, let me think. So we can build, I mean, like this super stupid example, we can build a BXJS logo in SVG or whatever that you can include in your project, but that sounds boring as hell. So let's not do that. We can build, um, is there, so there's a really cool MDX thing. Pomodoro clock. Oh yeah, we can, we can build a Pomodoro clock. We can build an accordion as well. That's sure. That sounds fine. So, um, I was thinking there's the MDX parsers, right? So maybe we, oh, there we, no, that's, that's the thing itself. Is there a parser actually? Maybe we can build an MDX, uh, component documentation, getting started. Da -da -da, components react. I mean, I would guess there's already existing ones, but, uh, okay, we have pack create react app MDX. But yeah, okay, let's let's stick to something uh, simpler. Pomodoro clock. Okay, well, let's let's build a Pomodoro clock. Why not? Let's do that. So whoops, that is not what I wanted to press. Let me drag out my terminal. And uh, we're gonna go into my VSL shell because I do like that more and we're gonna npm init minus y. So it's gonna be react BXS yes, react component, we're not gonna be anything fancy, right? And uh, we needed it. So Here's the question. Um, so we have the react create app, right? Uh, react, no wait, create react app. Man, I always screw this app. So create react app. Yes, we have that. And the question is, does it can it scaffold the component for me? Because honestly, I don't want to I mean, we can scaffold it from the scratch ourselves, but I would prefer to someone do it for me. Uh, but I don't know, I'm changing in title. So that doesn't seem like adding flow. Okay, you know what, let's, let's just do it from scratch. Why not? Okay, so we need what we need a uh, source, this is going to be our main folder, right? So it's going to be our component. We need demo folder that will host our um, index HTML that will show off whatever, however, the component works. We need, um, 
I think that's basically it, right? So um, let's see what the proposal was. How to develop a library, check example. Uh, oh, that's, I mean, that's a good thing. Do, wait, do we, why do we need an NPM link? We don't really need an NPM link in here. Like M M NPM link is very useful if you develop the command line commands, but if you develop a React component, I don't think it's that helpful. So React and React DOM, should they be as a peer dependencies or should they add uh, globally install? Okay, so yes. Basically, the thing here is that we're developing a React based component, which means that React and React DOM, in, in our case, it's React DOM because we're building for web, they should be in peer dependencies, right? So, but it's also um, should be in the development dependencies because, well, you have to develop it somehow, right? So installing it globally is definitely not a good idea because then you will get like version mismatch and, and all of that stuff. So it's not optimal. Let me need the git repo um, and ignore git, ignore some stuff right away. Yeah, I think we're good. What? Uh, wait a second. What? I, whoa. Okay. <laughs> Node modules. This is what I want to ignore. Git status. Okay, good. Right. So we installed the dev dependencies. Um, can you define actually, wait a second, npm peer dependencies. Can you define peer dependencies using command line? Because I never actually did it from the command line. I always do did it manually, which is, I mean, it's, it works, but I guess not. Okay. You know what? Let's just, let's just add them. So we're going to have peer dependencies and I'm just going to copy this and say that we are looking for, yeah, why not? Let's just, let's just keep them the same as the, why is it not? So, so um, dev dependencies is what I wanted to do. I thought I added the dev flag or is it, is it not dev flag or am I, I I'm probably confusing it with yarn. Okay, so we got that. We got that. Here's the next thing, right? So we can we need some sort of yes, we need transpilation, right? So we're going to be using TypeScript. We are uh, we can use Babel as well. Why not? Babel now integrates quite nicely with TypeScript, so we can do that. Rollup. Do you want to use rollup? Uh, here's the question. Parcel. Um so I really like parcel because it literally requires like zero config to do anything. Uh, and the question here do we use parcel or do we use rollup? I mean, rollup is nicer because it supports all the fancy like tree shaking and everything. On the other hand, parcel is like 10 times easier to set up. So maybe, maybe we just do parser, popular par, not parser, parcel. Okay, um, recipes. What recipes do you have? React, like DOM, parcel bundler. Parcel uh, preacts. Okay, those are like very simple recipes. Advanced, how it works. I said packagers. Packager and array. Okay, this is like command line stuff. We don't really need production. So you can give an entry point as a JavaScript, which is exactly what we want. So I guess let's just go with parcel. Why not? Uh, so we're going to parcel bundler. Okay. Gonna npm install uh, save dev, I think it was for. Um, yeah, I think it was save def for the NPM, right? I, like I'm using yarn so much that I keep forgetting how it works and always get confused about the flags. Okay, um, right, so we got the parcel and uh, okay, I have to wait for it to install and then we're gonna get... So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the demo, I'm gonna create the index.js here and in demo case, we are gonna, we're gonna take this, uh, no recipes, do, 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 wait a second. And we're gonna just take this parcel index. No, it is there no blog post. There we go. So I'm just gonna take this blog post and um, just reuse the example. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing it's gonna be as simple as you know, just reset and react. Uh, okay, so you need to install Babel and stuff, which kind of makes sense. Yeah, so I'm gonna take the basic app here. Oh, no, no, not index. There you go. And this is our index HTML. I'm gonna be super lazy and copy all the React starter up. React, let's call it component demo. Oh man, I totally forgot that my VSL environment is still slow as hell because of the Windows Defender stuff. Man, they have to really resolve that. It takes ages to install anything. 
Okay, um, yes, we don't need FS events on this system. So we got component demo, we got index.js, we got app, and theoretically, right now, if we say npx parcel uh, demo index HTML, right? What? Or is it parcel bundler? Bundler? No, wait. Ah. Uh, I mean, I typically program on Mac, but because I am too lazy to switch for streaming, you know, because I have the Windows stuff set up for it, uh, Windows works fine actually. So with the VSL edition, it's it's okay. It's actually pretty good. Okay, parcel bundler. Yes, we did that. So what am I missing? Parcel index HTML. Okay, let's try that. Start. Because you said npx. Uh, no, I did mean did I did I oh did I wrote npm? Oh damn it! <laughs> Thank you. I'm just yes. Oh uh, no! Come on, it's installed already. Wait, no, don't install it again. It's gonna take ages. Uh, start. Okay, you know what? Parcel demo index HTML. There you go. npm start. And it should be a local host. Okay, we should click on that. Uh, control click to follow. And we got an empty page with probably some errors. Uh, failed to load server response. Yes, we don't really have it. Oh, I did I include index.js? Yes, I did. So where's my where's my app? Body. So we we just stop it. We got script. Where where what? The scripts are not blocked, right? Because it's localhost and. Oh, I guess because it actually doesn't transpile anything, right? Because it needs Babel. This is the thing. Okay. So we need what? We need, um, blah, 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 blah. wait, but it doesn't say to install Babel here. Oh, that's interesting. Does it comes with Babel pre-baked right now? Index, uh, parcel. Okay. Building for production is not what we want. Okay. Packagers, API typeset, model resolution, assets, transforms. Babel, uh, Babel preset react. Okay, so we do have to give it basically react presets. It's kind of weird that you only have to do it. Um, okay, install, save dev, only for the react stuff, but not for the Babel itself, I guess. Is that how it works? Um, okay, uh, yeah, 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 that looks fine. Right, um, Babel RC, uh, so I can create Babel RC, we can do that, new file Babel RC. Minus D, I always, as I said, I always forget those, you know, shortcuts because I, I, I'm too used to yarn. I, do I have it actually installed here? Maybe I should just use yarn. Uh, yarn version, uh, version? Yes, I do, okay, maybe. <laughs> Maybe I should should just stick to yarn. Okay, and uh, npm start. Let's try. Does that work now? It's kind of weird that it doesn't actually give any errors. Do not infer Babel version defaulting to Babel seven. Either adds. Okay, so it needs dependency as well. Uh, right, that's that's not gonna work. Um, so their tutorial seems to be a bit outdated, which is. Uh, do, 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 do. do you have a better tutorial somewhere here? Yeah. How it works, examples maybe? Test, no, no examples, uh, that's a bit sad, but uh, maybe there's another package, examples, there we go. React, okay, cool. Text JSON, React, React DOM, uh, Babel preset, they literally only have Babel preset React here, not even a Babel RC. I, uh, wha what? Uh, one six one. We have the same version. We have one ten. Okay, that, that example is definitely outdated. Um, okay then. Symbol create React app parcel. Okay, let's have a look at this one. Ugh, it's getting slightly annoying, and I'm almost ready to throw it out and use a rollout. Roll up, sorry. Okay, package JSON. Dependencies. Uh, there is no bundler here. Oh no, wait, this is the, the package itself. Crap, it's called crap, of course it is. <laughs> Damn it. I guess you have to scaffold it uh, to actually get something. Right, um, 
I mean, yeah, I guess we should install Babel. So there well many loaders. Let me try to read this real quick. Automated from the generic Babel RC. Uh, Babel, Babel is popular. Mm, install presets and your plugins. Okay, okay, so you have to install Babel, I assume. Okay, it's, I mean, that makes sense. Minus D, okay. Babel core. I think the uh, latest one is the Babel core, right? It should work without the Babel RC. Oh, really? Okay, let me try to move Babel RC to Babel RC. That should uh, kill it, right? And PM start. So let's see. Okay, no more complaints, but uh, it is still not producing any UI, which is and no errors as well, which is even which is more confusing than anything else, to be honest. Let's see. Um, so what do we have here? This is parser require shim. There is parser. So this is some index.js. Okay. This is some parcel stuff. Yep, where's the where's my code actually? I don't really see my code. Which is no but I mean it doesn't produce any errors, so there's nothing wrong with my file, right? So this hello message is not even here. So that doesn't seem to compile it. That is so weird. Okay, so we got index.js. That can it be that it doesn't understand? Oh, maybe it is because it wants the the well no demon demo. Is that what you want? No. Um, hello, man. No, I, wait. It literally doesn't tell me that there's no such file. It just. How does this work? Okay, then. I envision half of the stream already fighting with um. Folder one index HTML. Go to folder one. One work. Oh, okay. So you you have to explicitly give in the whole path. Uh, that is not very convenient uh, and we have to do no we have npm start cannot be found wow instead you will need explicitly pointed to file what is what okay so it no i mean my index.js is literally copy from their tutorial it is there's no issues with it it's like one class that renders hello username that's literally it this will work if we compile it properly but um right uh so what do you not like okay here's the question if i no this is not this is in demo folder and this is exactly what we're compiling we're taking the parcel demo index html and this is our entry point right so in theory i don't know um this like why does it not produce any errors this is so weird i think this is the first bundler i see that literally just compiles everything quietly and then fails this is so weird okay um let me think but okay once demo index html it cannot find it so demo slash is still renders empty page for us you know what let's try this so if i throw this in here in the main in the root of the folder right and we're going to be like okay so let's try index html will that work if that's going to work it's going to be even more confusing for me no this also doesn't work and uh do we have anything here a little bit so it doesn't it doesn't even pick up the index yes it's oh yeah it's empty why is it empty okay then um thing Okay, I guess let's move that back to demo. So it doesn't pick up my index.js for some reason. Source, yes, that looks okay. Why does it not? Uh, yeah, but it's relative pass already, right? It's here, it's index.js. I like the source index is not even done yet. So we got, okay, you know, let me kill that, kill this, npm start. So it generates this disk folder, right? And last time I used it with Vue.js, it actually worked without problems. What the hell is, like, what is happening now? Yep, and index.js is now blank. Delete one of the index files. That is very, if it works like this, it is super silly. Okay, let me kill the source index.js, right? Okay, so there's now one index file in here. And this is the only one reference. <laughs> if this is works now, then I don't know. 
Uh, no, it doesn't work. And I assume index is still empty. It doesn't transpile my index.js. Yes. Um, why? I have no idea. And uh, okay, what if I tell you like, look here, will that help you? Restart that. It still doesn't transpile index.js property. It's it's still literally empty. Oh, wait, what? Did I paste the thing in the wrong file? Am I being the moron the whole time? Oh, fine. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Okay. I am. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, that do happen to me sometimes. Oh God. Okay. That is. Yep. Yep. I did that way too many times and suffered way too much uh, because I'm an idiot. That is a very common thing. Okay. I'm guessing right now it should work, right? There we go. Okay. <laughs> I'm guessing this is what you were trying to tell me all this time. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Sorry, I am really slow today. And uh, as you can see, I'm not a very bright person. So, <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> right, so we got this working. Uh, and uh, let's call it, um, no, let's rename that. Let's call it demo app. And in this case, we're gonna, so we're gonna keep it for now like this. And in this case, yes, we're gonna create the, whoops, we're gonna create the index HTML over here. Uh, index.js, I'm sorry. And we're gonna create a component here. So we're gonna import react from react, right? And then we're gonna export default class uh, Pomodoro, let's call it Pomodoro, extends um, react component, right? And then we're gonna render return div hello from Pomodoro timer, right? Um, that's basically it for the demo. So we basically should be now to uh, should now be able to do Pomodoro from uh, that should be source sit and then uh, maybe let's make it like uh, each one. This is a demo for Pomodoro timer component. Compone component. There we go. And uh, I'm gonna say Pomodoro. And nope. Uh, just close it and reformat. And uh, there we go. So in theory, yep. Uh, maybe H1 is not the best choice here. So let's just make it P. Um, there you go. Okay. Cool. So now we actually have it rendered, and it looks fine, and it works. Uh, no, no, that's the point, right? So I want to point uh, to local index. Uh, if I like, I don't need to point to source, right? Because the source will be our component that will be published. And the demo folder we have, we'll have this wrapper that will be like a template page that will render our component, right? And will also be used for development, basically. Okay, so uh, Pomodoro timer, what the hell does it actually do? <laughs> Uh, I remember I heard about the Pomodoro thing, but I never used it myself. Okay, so it's literally like a tomato t timer. Okay. Um, so set the timer. You should be able to give how many minutes? Work on a task. When it ends, you get something happens basically. Okay, cool. Um, so we need what? We need state. We need a time timer, right? No, I guess we need just time. Now as default to 25, uh, 25 minutes, it says by default. So let's just default to that. And um, what do you not like here? Uh, do you need some special thing? Uh, oh God, come on. Babel, why do you do this to me? Was it a different, um, different preset? Oh, React, uh, no wait. JS class properties classes. Yes, this is what I want. And I want class property, please. Uh, class property definitions. Uh, this is probably not even here, is it? Top classes. Okay. Logged on a team docs. We want documentation and we want 
do you have a descriptions of uh no i mean i know that you can do that within the constructor but that's a annoying way of doing it and just defining a class property is way nicer why do you not where's my there you go okay so this is plugins presets preset env preset flow preset typescript oh we actually want the preset typescript as well right so we are uh, right before i forgot okay so we almost started writing it uh, as a javascript thing because <laughs> i'm too used to doing that it actually has to be typescript so we are um we are gonna rename it to ts and now you're gonna see me suffer because i never wrote any typescript um or i mean not never but uh, i think it should be tsx if i remember correctly and i believe we actually no longer need the react preset if i'm correct okay babel typescript react because i think the tsx is now part of the tsx is now part of the typescript so you no longer need that stuff um typescript babel starter so is that a new one Six months ago, 17 days. Okay, so this seems relatively new. We got package JSON, we got Babel core, class properties, rest spreads. Okay, so yeah, exactly. Um, wait, rest spreads, I guess it's not in all browsers, right? So let's just uh, take the stuff from this starter. So we need that, we need that. And I guess we also need the custom, uh, we we'll probably need TypeScript itself. That sounds like a good idea. We also need a custom Babel RC now, right? Because we have to define those or I, I wanna add those things in there. Okay, um, blah, 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 blah. so we don't need that. We're using uh, parcel to handle this for us. Um, we are gonna, yes, we're gonna do this and rename that to Babel RC, save that. Okay, that looks good. Let's try to see parcel, I oh, know, NPM start, right? So here's the thing, we're no longer actually writing JavaScript. Oh yeah, there's no longer index J, um, how does it integrate with parcel actually? Yeah, because can I just say that import TypeScript, does that work? Um, getting started, uh, retypes, right? Is there, there was a TypeScript, no, there wasn't a TypeScript here. Ooh. So I can just say import T uh, JSX, uh, TSX, I'm sorry. Does that work? Oh yeah, nice, that is very cool. Okay, where's my thing? There's my thing and there is a board it. I guess something broke. Installing Babel Core, but it's already installed. What are you doing? I guess it's a good idea. No, did we have it in our, no, we didn't. Okay, so something failed. Duplicate plugin preset detected. Uh, some plugin, some unique name. What kind of duplicate plugin? like wow well, what do you not like plugins that error is confusing as hell but i can't remove babel rc right because i have or does the um, parcel picks up the plugins automatically plugins plugin api uh, no this is plugins for it so should okay that on one hand, that is very convenient. On the other hand, this is confusing as hell. <laughs> All right, let's try that. Okay. Right, okay, seems to be working. No more errors. If that works, there's gonna be some like black magic. Uh, reference error, React is not defined. Um, what do you know? I cannot find declaration for React. I guess now we have to look at the uh, TypeScript starter, yes. Okay, so what is going on here? Um, let me delve into, uh, how's that React? Oh, that's not React, right? <laughs> uh, so TypeScript, React, how does it work? React and that pack, J6, yes, there you go. This is what we want. That's great, oh, there was a React starter. We want that as well. Okay, uh, let's see, foobar, more foobar, namespace, this, Okay, import my components. Okay, error. Yes, that makes sense. Declare interface my components. Where's the, okay, that's the React starter. So let's just have a look at the app TSX. Import, oh, okay, because it uses the 
proper uh, whoops no react as react yes how does it import react dom so because yeah because the the way the imports work in typescript are a bit different from uh from the javascript right okay react is not defined so i guess we have the exactly same problem here as react and now now it works okay cool uh types react yes the types things that i never used as well so um i believe you actually don't need to do or do you need to do that because i rem if i remember correctly the um uh vs code actually is supposed to drag in types automatically so if we init that as a TypeScript project, which I believe we can do here, TypeScript uh, project configuration and uh, configure, yes, please. Okay, and uh, maybe we can also check out the TypeScript starter here to see what kind of config do they provide, I believe. Yeah, okay, so there's some additional options that you probably need for, um, or react so we want exclude node modules build scripts acceptance webpack source setup tests i don't care about that stuff uh okay that looks fine so i guess we need to restart the whole thing for the typescript to pick that up but yeah i believe the typescript the um, no it still complains so can you like uh definitions nope uh, maybe it is because I have not, wait a second. So I'm going to kill that. I'm going to say view, what was the full reload thing? Uh, reload, reload window. There you go. Um, uh, ESL. Thank you very much. Okay, cool. MBM starts and it's still complaining. Okay. So I guess we have to install it manually. I remember reading something about that they had that maybe they like it was experimental or something or maybe they still haven't shipped it because it looked like crazy and cool as hell it literally just imports the thing and it pulls in the um definitions automatically and you just basically see them which is really cool okay now we have the definitions for react which is good um all right i probably closed it a bit too early so we no longer need that we now have this working okay um so the state definition actually works now. We don't really need any other things here. Okay, right. Um, so what do we want to show? Actually, we want to show. We want to show um, duration, right? So it's going to be like input type text. Value is gonna be this state time. And um, maybe we should just distract that. It's gonna be way more descriptive. I'm uh, this state. It's really neat that it actually highlights the unused variables in TypeScript. That is something very convenient. On change, we're gonna do this handle um, duration change, I guess, right? Change. So you're gonna define this as events and it's gonna be an arrow function. And we're gonna say this set state, right? And we're gonna say time e target value. Um, highlights and used variables in JavaScript as well. Oh, really? I I never noticed actually. <laughs> so may, maybe it's just me uh, not noticing things uh no i think e target value should work as well right so okay let's just check it so theoretically if we now go and start uh amen as it takes so long to refresh it just die because of that okay let's restart and uh local host one two three four well Okay, unsafe Eva, what? No, yeah, localhost 1034. What's going on? Refuse to evaluate the script as JavaScript because unsafe eval. Okay. Just I just added this thing. Why 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 did it break? Okay, so I You're gonna work now? No. Localhost 1234. 
Okay, here's the question. If I remove that duration, right? You're gonna work now. What just happened? Why did it stop compiling? You're not happy about this? Okay, I am so confused right now. Yeah, we are compiled, right? Still doesn't load. What the? Where? Am I being idiot again at some point? Or why? Why did it stop working? Um. Okay, let me just kill that. Kill that. Exit my VSL session, and maybe do npm start from here. Uh, okay, I, I guess it doesn't. Yeah, right. Okay, I should have. I should be in the VSL because we uh, otherwise we'll have to reinstall the whole node modules. Um, okay, so we started the VSL session. Some networking related thing. What? Why is it just suddenly stop working? Okay, you know what? Let's try. Let's try running it from here. Node modules all. Cannot be what? What do you mean cannot be removed? Okay, RM minus Earth node modules. Okay, sudo RM minus RF. No. Wait, is there something? Um, task manager, is there something just hanging in the background? Oh, come on. Uh, so there's two init sessions. One in each session. Why is there one in each session? We're gonna kill that. I guess that was the problem. Uh, okay, start that. Clear npm start. No wait. First node modules. There we go. Okay. npm install. Yeah, I mean, as much as the VSL is quite a nice tool, it still has some minor issues, especially with like multiple uh, things running in the background and then the communication the networking stack between the uh, linux part and the windows part it's quite new so i think they released it only in the last major update so there's still like quite a lot of issues okay so let's just use the windows side for it and uh, then we should not have any problems there we go okay cool um now let us put the input back. I probably already removed it from yeah, of course, of course. I copied into into my god damn it, I have to rewrite that again. Okay. Um input type text value time um on change. Close that. This handle duration change. And that should be working, right? So if I change it, yep. Okay, uh, when you wrote VS Code, oh yeah, right, I did that. That's true, that's probably when the terminal detached. So when I reloaded the VS Code window without actually exiting, um, that is, I yeah, I probably didn't close it. Okay, but you know, whatever, it works now, so we're good. Okay, um, so let's say, okay, this is gonna be line one. And uh, it's gonna be div two, and now we're gonna have a button that is gonna say start. And then on click, uh, no, not on cl on click. It's gonna be this uh, start timer, right? Okay. Um, this is gonna be events. We don't care about the event in this case. Uh, so first of all, there's an error here which says implicit any type. Uh, okay, type script event type. What is the type for event on lick? No, that is not a thing. <laughs> Uh, React event types, yes, type of event in TypeScript. Uh, instance of keyboard events, user defined type guards, events. I don't want user defined type guards. Is there like React events or something? Wait for, I like <laughs> TypeScript. Ah, oh, yeah, that was the first one I clicked and I should have looked at that. Okay, uh, synthetic event. Okay, so where do I react form event? Oh, so there's like literally. That is gonna be React um, click event. Wait, how is it defined? React form events. I mean, is there like React synthetic events? Synthetic event? Or is it just like this? Oh yeah, because we imported all of that stuff, right? 
Um, click. No, wait. We imported React as a package. So where's my event? Mouse event should be global. Okay, let's see. Mouse event. Uh, I guess it wants brackets around it. Oh, I guess maybe. Wait a second. React. I mean, it's it's kind of nice to use React dot synthetic events. Is that a thing? You are you a thing? What are you? Can I find declaration for what? Well, but we installed them. We have them in package. What are you complaining about now? Types React. There they are. Okay. I guess it glitched out again. That, no, I didn't. I started from the normal. Oh yeah, <laughs> they also synthetic event HTML input. Yeah, that's that's a good one. Thank you very much. We're gonna use that. So I guess it glitched out again because the um, VS Code guys they announced that they're gonna basically integrate the VS Code with a VSL, and because we were working with VSL and then switched to the normal console, it all was like oh, I'm gonna just basically die now. Let me just do this and restart VS Code <laughs> to unscrew all of this. There we go. Now it picks up the types. Okay, cool. Okay, uh, yes, Pomodoro event. Thank you very much. Um, okay, there we go. So now it works. We got this. We got start. All of this works. Um, we don't care about the event here. Target value. Value does not exist on event target. Why do you not exist? What do you mean doesn't exist? The current, do you want current target? Okay. I mean, target works as well, so why doesn't it not exist? That is a bit weird. But fine, whatever. Um, right, so we're gonna say, we're gonna say constructor props, uh, super props, right? And then we're gonna say this timer is gonna be null. And uh, timer does not exist on type of Medora. Um, how do you define properties in TypeScript? Yes, yes, I know that you already wrote that it should be current target. <laughs> I guess TypeScript is a bit picky about that. Okay, so <clears throat> TypeScript uh, classes, where's the handbook? Classes, there we go. Properties, how do you define property? Greeting string, okay, cool. This is what we have to say. We have to say timer is gonna be, um... oh God, okay. What, what is the type for a timer in TypeScript? TypeScript timeout and grammar said timeout timeout type yes please timer is not assignable to a type number is it just a number i mean it is probably just a number right is a correct version of set timeout uh yeah i mean that's just i guess just a number type of set timeout. i mean uh, Timeout re returns number all the time, right? So it's either minus one if the timeout is unset or some number if it's the timeout. Okay, um, this timer is gonna be equal set timeout. Uh, not this set timeout. That is too much set timeout for me. This state, uh, okay, first of all, Distract this state, uh, yes, state into time. const time in milliseconds. It's gonna be time multiplied by milliseconds. And since it was minutes, we're gonna multiply it by 60, right? Probably gonna screw that up again, but uh, this is my best try. <laughs> okay, and then this on timer ends. Uh, we're gonna have another function. Zip. There we go. Okay, so we got this function, which should do something. So I guess we're gonna say in, uh, so I guess we're gonna say state and it's gonna be initialized, right? So we're gonna have a state. Oh, wait, because we're using TypeScript, we actually have access to enums that is incredibly useful in cases like this. So uh, we actually can have a look here, enums. So enum, can I just say type enum? Uh, no, I guess I will have to say, I will have to define that somewhere here, right? Type enum Pomodoro state, and then just an object. And we're gonna say 
initial initialized gonna be equal one and then we're gonna have running and then we're gonna have finished right so this is basically all we want right or i guess stopped is better because it does not necessarily going to be uh, Pomodoro state initialized. There we go. Okay, nice. So in this case, we are going to do this set state. Um, state Pomodoro state running, right? So we're going to state update the state state we're running, then say the state to stopped. And that's basically all it has to do, I think. Am I missing something? Is Pomodoro timer something more complex than this? Okay, um, we have Pomodoro experts in the chat, so please help me if I'm, if I'm forgetting something. Okay, so we got the duration, and I guess we just do this. Div um, state, and it's gonna be, yes, we have to do this. Uh, we got the enum. Can we turn an enum into a string? Is that a thing? Probably it is a thing, right? Yeah, you can. Okay, up, down, left, right. So we can just say, okay, initialized is initialized. Just be lazy and be like running and stopped. There you go. Now it's a string. Pomodoro technique. I mean, I looked at the wiki page, but it's gonna have like, I, I would need like 10 minutes to read that. So I don't want to. So the more you work, the longer braids you have. Okay, that sounds complicated. I don't wanna implement that. <laughs> We're just gonna keep it simple. We're gonna have a simple timer, you know, like the, the Pomodoro thing that you just like crank it and then it works. That's all we're gonna implement. <laughs> okay, cool, state. Um, 25 minutes should display alert after five minutes. User click start again. Uh, okay, yeah, let's just keep it simple. It's gonna be like a s simple thing that just you know, click a button, it starts 25, maybe is a bit too much. Running, uh, one, I mean, we can we can have probably 0 0.1. It should work, right? Oh, no, that won't work actually, right? Because I am not number. This is what I should do. And uh, what we can actually do is, do we want to display? I mean, we can display the countdown as well, but I'm, I'm feeling too lazy about that. So let's just do that. So theoretically, we're running now. And uh, in a few seconds, one of a minute is what? Yeah, there you go. Okay, so it works. So we got the timer running. It works. It's great. And it's TypeScript. Also, you know, this at this point, that's not that different from JavaScript, to be honest. So, <laughs> I, um, yeah, I mean, it's nice. Okay, cool. So, we got the demo page. We got, uh, I guess we should install the typings for React DOM as well. Uh, yes, terminate npm install minus d types React DOM, I assume. Okay, so we got that. Let's see the proposal. So we did that. Let's see the proposal thing. Uh, so we are using TypeScript and Babel. We're using parcel instead of rollup. Transpile to ES and UMD and why? Um, I would just transpile to UMD at this point, like unless you have a very large and complex library like Lodash or you know whatever that has like 2 billion functions, then there's no real point to publish it as uh, ES modules. Why can't we have type inside state as well? With the TypeScript, you should need to type cast time to number, right? That's a good question, actually. Does TypeScript automatically cast the... Uh, um, that's actually a good point. We don't need that. Does TypeScript automatically cast it to number? It's a very good question. Wait a second. So I'm here. I'm curious. Okay. Console log time. Console log uh, time in milliseconds. So, uh, yes, so let's see, 0 0.1. This is the tricky case, basically. Okay, you seems like you are correct and it seems to be casting it to number automatically. Because I mean, we do have the time and state is actually a number, right? So it's gonna be inferred to be a number. And 
I guess you are right. So we don't actually have to do this manual cast, which is very neat. So this is like, timer is not assignable to type number. What? It is literally a number. Oh, I guess, is that what you want? Timer? Can I find that? No, what? <laughs> Wait a second. Type timer is not assignable to type number. Why do you say? Oh, TypeScript. Timer type. Uh, type time. Yeah, there you go. That's exactly the problem I'm having. I'm also having this issue. Set interval Node.js dot timer, but it's not Node.js. Use window set interval. I don't want to use set interval. I need set timeout. What is what kind of advice is this? Any set it. Okay. Is that really what you want to do? All right, that's not. This is a type definition. And because it's JS6, it doesn't work like this. Okay. <laughs> God damn it. But it compiles. That is so weird. Why number instead of number? Is there actually a difference between a small number and a big, like capitalized number? Okay, wait a second. Where's the types? Basic types. As a number with a small letter, is there a number with a capital letter as well? Is that a thing? I hope it's not a thing because that will be very silly. Number. No, it seems like it's literally just a number with a small n. That's the type definition for TypeScript. Like the number with a capital N is a, is a class in JavaScript, right? So you cannot use it as a type definition. Um, private timer zero. Right, uh, yeah, but actually using it as a private is a good idea, first of all. Second of all, why is it still not assigned? It should work. I mean, it works. That's the thing, right? So it actually works fine. Now it says it's not used. You know what? I'm just gonna keep it like this. So it just gives this warning. This like timer is not assignable to type number, but it actually compiles and works as expected, which is oh equals zero. Wait, really? Private timer. Uh, I misspelled private. There you go. So how do you access private properties in TypeScript? Private, yes, private, private name, this name. Okay, so that should work, right? Save, okay, it builds and it works. I mean, it works, but it still gives you this warning that the timer is not assignable to, uh, it's like, okay, so. <laughs> I let's let's try to Google that. I mean, there, there gotta be a solution that like use oh wait, <laughs> use set interval instead of set timeout. Oh, use window. Is that what they mean? Window. There we go. Okay. So basic. Oh, I see now. Okay. So if you don't use window dot set timeout, it resolves to the Node.js typings and assumes that it's going to return this node.js.timer thing instead of a number. Okay, I got, now I got it. Okay, now we figured it out, right. Okay, um, so we had it working, we had the components. Uh, we were talking about, so we can close that, or maybe it's a bit too early to close that. So yes, again, I think we're just gonna publish it as UMD. We don't need ES modules in this case. As I said, it's only useful for large libraries that expose a huge API surface and that, you know, user might wanna import separately. In our case, it doesn't matter. Uh, how to get props out of completion. That's basically TypeScript case, all right? If you have typings. By the way, how do you generate typings for your projects? Declaration files, uh, is, that, is that a thing? Can you like just TypeScript? Generate type definitions. It should be able to do that on this in its own, right? I should be able to just say, hey, generate this for me. Yeah, DTS again. Okay, so there is a thing. I guess, yeah, there you go. There's the repo. Creates a starter type definition files for any modular library. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, we can just be like, uh, yes, terminate that. NPX, DTS, uh, but no, that is. <laughs> No, God damn it. Okay, npx dts gen and uh, minus m. My, 
I mean, if I just execute it like this, will it generate it for the current project? No, it wants module uh, minus m bxjs react component. Is that what you want? Like the current thing? Uh, cannot load module. Okay. Um, minus d my right to a file std out input name of a template so it only works for like published modules for real minus f no minus f is right to a file right we need the input but it seems to only work on can it just be like dot does that work Nope, does work. Okay, it seems to be only working on NPM modules. You you can't really, the name of a module, the string will be required. Oh, okay, so we can just say minus M and then dot. So this should be it. Okay, there we go. And uh, <laughs> dot dot DTS, yeah, perfect. Um, Right, um, dot dot DTS, we're gonna move it to xjs react component dot d dot ts right okay that's nicer and uh oh right because we don't really have yeah main file is wrong right source index.js. there we go okay let's try that again it seems to write to file by default and we move it and okay you cannot move it because there's already a file and we'll move it again now let's have a look here and oh uh pff. right uh because the entry file is wrong again it should be tsx okay i am forgetting to do things correctly there we go okay uh, let's check it first before moving nope that still is broken why is it broken? Uh, what do you want actually? So it's going to require, or does it want, does it want like compiled JavaScript already? Here's the question. Okay, so what if we say minus m dist, uh, which one is the our file? No, that, that sounds like a terrible idea. So let's, let's just, uh, come on. Let me just say, okay, uh, npx typescript source index tsx. Okay, it wants jsx flag. There you go, jsx flag. Um, react, okay, so you need to give it react, right. Yes, this is what it wants. Oh yeah, because we are running Babel. Oh, come on, npx, Babel, um, source, index, tsx. And we need Babel CLI, okay. God damn it, does it have to be like this? Uh, right, we got installed. It's kind of weird that uh, it feels a bit strange that you need the compiled uh, Babel CLI source index no TSX, please. Just installed it. Why are you installing it second time? Okay. Enum is a reserved word. The TypeScript project, what do you want from me? I feel like maybe that's the wrong way of doing it. Um, okay, um, generate, how do you produce? Yes, how do you produce typings for, no, not for an existing. How do you allow JS, DTS, GAN? Maybe it already exists. How do you produce it for a TypeScript project? Yes, oh, there you go, okay. So they this is literally all we wanted. Okay, I was doing the wrong thing all the time. TypeScript, uh, what was it? Minus minus declaration, De declaration, and then source index TSX. 
I, it makes sense that you can, what, what I mistyped it. It makes sense that like, if you already wrote it in TypeScript, it should be trivial to generate the declaration actually, right? Oh, come on. Minus minus JSX react. There we go. Can we work please? Uh, okay, I guess it doesn't want equal just like this. Can please work? I, yeah. So now it complains about node. Why do you want types node? Where do you get them from? Lib compiler to option is 2015 or later. Uh, yeah, sure. Yes, to Why is it Node.js actually? I'll put your build dist. Uh, React root here. Yeah, okay. Lib. Oh, okay. Um, now that seems, that seems right. Why do you not? Module res. Okay, yeah, this is the require resolution, right? So we got common JS. Oh God, okay. Um, why do you not work? Uh, okay, here's the question. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba, TypeScript, Babel, uh, generate type definition. Babel starter. There a type definition generation thing here. Package. Types, TSC emit declaration only. Is that literally, is that just what we want? Okay, you know what? I'm gonna copy this. And let's, let's see if that actually works. If, if that works, it's gonna be incredible. Okay, um, so we can say npm run builds uh, types, right? Uh, oh, because it probably needs, so we only need types for source index TSX. And maybe it's a good idea to remove source uh, index DTS. Yes, and remove index JS. There we go. Okay, uh, npm run build types. This seems to be working actually. No, it doesn't. Option cannot be specified without specifying option declaration or option composite. How does it work in their project? Um, oh boy, okay. So JS, uh, so it literally runs build types and then runs build JS. Run type check, watch, type check, TSC no init. Okay then, why does not this thing working? We have exactly the same config. No, not exactly the same actually. Target, yes, ah, maybe that's the problem. So because we took the config from the, wait a second, we took the config from the TypeScript React starter, right? React starter, maybe that's the problem. Um, yeah, but you cannot use create React app for the components. I know that it's easy to set up, uh, but there is, as far as I know, at least from what I've read so far today, you cannot create like scaffold the component using the create react app. It will scaffold the whole application uh, for you. So unfortunately we are limited to using this. Um, okay, so let's see. So we got yes next, uh, let's try this. So we got yes next, right? We got declarations. Is that really all you have to do is just say, wait a second. So if I just say declarations true, Will it just generate declarations for me now? Here's the question. Maybe all we need is this one option. NPM start. Can you generate declarations? And I assume parcel, re no, it doesn't respect that. <laughs> okay. Well, it was worth a try. Yes, stop it. Uh, pfft, come on, no, 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 no. Okay, uh, let's see. So yes, next, right? That's the one thing. Uh, output strict true. We have strict. Do we don't have strict? Whatever. Um, right. Okay. So npm run builds types. Right.
can only be specified cannot be specified declaration in composite okay so what if we say how, like how did it we have declaration now in config right so theoretically it should pick it up okay let's let's try adding it uh, declaration and what you want Uh, okay, now I want JSX flag because of course it does. Um, okay, React. For people asking me why I don't use TypeScript, this is why. Uh, while it got a lot better on um, integrating with existing toolset, it is still quite a pain to, um, as you can see, to make it like work properly with, uh, with for example, we are using the Babel. Uh, class properties and object rest spreads and it just doesn't understand it right so if, if you don't use babel it will break oh boy okay um let me think how do you generate typings without doing that do they have any typing generation here they should have right ts uh, eject no this is they have the react scripts ts thing react app basic react react scripts ts okay do you have typing generation here uh that uh, yeah okay this is the fork of create react app and it should have react scripts and scripts should be built eject there's no script i guess do they do react projects like the TypeScript react projects not generate typings is that how it works uh okay react typescript babel react generate type definitions equals loss well so far it's been a bit of a pain in ass uh, i mean i guess if you use scaffolding for it it's going to be way easier or like next js but for building components man that is not so convenient so far gotcha many libraries don't have type definitions yes this is um this i can tell you why right now okay uh react to typescript definitions from react components okay uh, do you also I, mean, I guess one option would be to just run something like this over our compiled version which would probably work way better than what we're doing right now okay um so here's the question if i do npx tsc source index net net and that that is not what i want yes yes uh yeah it will complain now that it wants react okay you know what just gonna uh, index dts index js we are just gonna set up build with babel uh, sorry with parcel because parcel because this seems to be working quite much better uh, so production what we want is as platform gotchas parcel build source index tsx if that's literally all it takes to build it then it's kind of amazing and all the drops to parcel that is really cool and now i got the index.js and that actually looks okay let's just format it uh, no that not transform formats there we go so here's the thing uh if we now we build that if we now takes this and say import from dist index.js right so theoretically that should work and start just gonna complain that there's no type definitions and everything but that theoretically should work right and if that works and it actually does nice okay that, i mean parcel is actually kind of amazing okay cool um so we got that i guess we should uh we should actually compile it to a different folder from the demo at least uh so where is the end line uh, this file naming strategy yes so can you directory and cross platform can i just say uh sets node and production so it does it for you that's always nice 
How can I say build it into the lib folder? Build minus D. Ah, yeah, there you go. Minus D. Nice. That is very cool. Lib. Okay. Uh, so theoretically, if I now do to stop it. Now what? Come on. Oh, why do you have to be like this? Did you stop it? No, you didn't. Or maybe you did. Yes, you did. Okay. npm run build. npm rub. That's a thing now. Okay. We got our lib. We got our file that's generated. So here's the question. If I just, uh, that is the wrong thing. If I just, where's my chat? Chat come back. Could help. Yeah, that's, the, so that's, that's, that, that's the silliest thing, right? So this, there's the third party generators. There was the official one, DTS scan, right? So here's the question. If I just say npx DTS scan, and then I say lib index.js, if that works and that produces a proper, what? Uh, what in the, oh, God damn it, I'm clicking the wrong window. If that produces the correct thing, What do you not like? MPX, DTS, oh, DTS get. Nah. Yes, thank you. I have I have been doing too many typos today. Um oh yeah, minus M. Okay. Cannot load module lib index JS. Can you maybe can you load it like this? Do you like this way of pathing better? Um, okay. You want the full path maybe? <clears throat> Here's the question. If I paste the full path and it actually, <laughs> that is not helpful. That is just straight up not helpful. Um, okay then. Uh, D um, oh, JS, DTS, yes. Okay, there was another library that generated, yeah, React to DTS. So React to DTS and uh, name of the reads from std in to process file. Wait, so how does it work? Okay, let's try it anyway. MP MPX, uh, React to DTS, lib index.js. Will that work? Um, um, oh, because the module is called differently, right? Okay, but ah, come on. Why do you have to be like this? Name your modules accordingly. Come on. Okay, um, here's, wait a second, here's the question. If we point it to the source, will that work? Yes, like, no, that also doesn't work. Okay, so it, it, no, it didn't expect React, oh man. Oh boy, um, try TypeScript version. I mean, we have, we have TypeScript in the, um, in the package JSON, right? So we have the 311, the latest one. Okay, uh, right, okay, I give up on the TypeScript definitions. Uh, if you know how to do that, feel free to send a pull request and uh, explain in it what exactly I did wrong. But I don't really wanna spend more time on that. Uh, that is something, as I said, you know, TypeScript is not my thing. I have not worked with it too much, so we're gonna just skip that. So how to automate publishing by releasing the new version with NPM version and CI. Um, right, so I typically don't use NPM version. What I do is usually I use uh, something like Travis CI, right? And uh, we can have a look at the exo frame, for example. Uh, and uh, Travis has a very nice way of, well, it's a very nice CI tool, right? So what you can do is you can specify deploy providers, which 
there's like a bunch of them, including the, for example, uh, GitHub releases. So there's like, uh, like I have this releases thing. And as you can see here on every Travis successful build, it uploads the files to the GitHub release. So you can just download the binary, which is nice. It also has the NPM provider, which is really easy to set up. You just provide your email, you provide the encrypted uh, API key, and then you specify when it should be published. So in my, uh, in my opinion, it is better not to do that on, uh, you know, manually or whatever. What I typically do is I do it on tags. So whenever I release a new tag here, which is a version, right? So we have this like tag versions this tag gets pushed to the uh, um, npm by the travis so you literally just have to do git tag git push and it's done that's all you have to do so this is how i typically do that i don't find npm version to be convenient i everything else is basically in the travis ci documentation so i don't know if i can add anything new here why do we need to follow semver principles because they make sense that's literally what I have to do <laughs> This is like semantic versioning is um, straightforward, right? So there's the major minor patch thing, but it's better to read it as breaking feature bug fix. At least this is my preference. So if you break something, if you have a new release of your library that will not be working with the old code that people have, it has to be major version. If you have a new feature or whatever, you know, minor, minor addition or minor changes that basically add something like it's usually a feature, right? So if you add something that doesn't break things, then it's going to be a minor version. And if you bug fix, if you change some minor things that don't impact anything from outside, that is basically a patch. This is all you have to know about semantic versioning and following it is kind of important because NPM works around semantic versioning because all of those versions here are kind of semver, right? So if you are not following that, then people will be very angry with you because you're going to break their code. MPX DDX generator. Okay, let's try that. So let's let's see. Um, name something. SRZ project ident. Uh, okay. Uh, names. Yeah, whatever. Let, let, let me just try run it and see if that works. Okay, so we now have folder. Uh, cannot find module TypeScript. Are you kidding? Are you kidding me, NPM? What? It is what? Oh no! Okay. Oh, you know what? Let me just do this. Cat TypeScript. It is there, right? No, what? Okay, wait, wait a sec. What just happened? Did npx screwed up my node module installation? It seems to have done that. Okay, let's try that again. Sometimes and wait, what? Right, uh, right, okay, rem node modules. I'm forgetting that this is not how I do it. Let me try that again. npm install, where are my, where's my what? Operation not permitted? I, what is happening NPM? Why are you so, why are you doing this to me? No nodes, there's no node modules anymore? There is node modules. Did the same bug again? Can I kill that? Yes, I can. Okay, you know what? Can okay, let's kill package lock as well, just to be sure. NPM install. Come on, NPM. For once, work. I feel like I really should migrate back to Yarn. Like NPM was doing good work and uh -huh. operation was rejected by your operating system. Well, that's gr what? Do they need typing? What? What do you want? It just worked. No longer works. Oh, Windows. Or is it NPM? I don't know. I don't want to run it as root. What are you talking about? Nodes. Okay. Let me try to kill that PowerShell. Let me try to start a new one. Node modules. OK. 
cannot find okay it doesn't exist that is correct you're gonna glitch out again At times like this, I remember why I moved to Mac OS basically and Unix based systems because they don't have weird stuff like this going on. Now it works. All right. Let us try that NPX. Um, are you <laughs> Okay then. Um, right, okay. So we got there, use the question TypeScript. Are you in there? Yes, you are in there. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna take this DTS generator thing and I'm just gonna npm install minus D because screw that. Apparently NPX works like crap on Windows. So, um, let me, what? Oh no, was it? <laughs> I'm sorry, I accidentally banned you. <laughs> oh no, Twitch, why would you do that? Oh no, oh no, <laughs> there, Twitch has this ban button on chat and I accidentally clicked it. Oh no, no, I don't have your message. Oh, okay, it's still in my history. God damn it, Twitch, why would you have to put it in there? Oh, come on. So I'm, I'm sorry about that. That was unintentional. <laughs> God damn it. Yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, content and disk is newer. <laughs> Okay, close this, open package JSON, save this. Okay, now we can do, um, delete all of that. Okay, npm run, uh, how did I name it? Type, yes. Can you please work now? There you go, now it works. And typings, uh, let's see, where's, where's my typings? It's not outputted to typings that in source, no. Doesn't seem to generate anything. Where's the typings folder now? Um, okay, let's just try maybe the source. Does that, does that work? Okay, that works. So I guess maybe you need to create the folder. <gasps> that looks that looks like it like it's like it's actually actually works. Okay, thank you. That actually works. NPX on Windows apparently is not usable. So, okay, you know what? I'm gonna, but uh, yes, let's call it bxjs react component. And I'm just gonna copy that into package JSON as well. Okay, so we got typings now. Thank you guys very much for that. Uh, I would not be able to do that without you. So we got the build set up. We talked about sim versioning. We commit rules. Do we have to follow commit rules? Well, that's absolutely that, like, this is something that is completely up to you. I know that, yeah, this is like a very common style, but I personally don't like it. I just like proper descriptive commits that say, hey, I did this and this. And then if you need to explain, you just, you know, take the other lines to do that. But this is something that is completely up to you you know if you want to have commits like this then go ahead and do that if not then well i mean it's your project so it's your rules how to create uh, release nodes well i typically use the um, git extras uh thing uh from tj yeah it's a very handy um bunch of extras i don't remember if i have them installed actually let me check git change log I don't have them installed, but essentially you like you can install them and there's like a whole ton of, okay, there's a video, we don't want a video. Um, there is, where's the list of commands? There we go. There's like a whole ton of very handy commands and one of them is git changelog, which generates changelog for you. Uh, you can generate it either for all commits or you can generate it from the last tag. So this is why tags are important as well. And then you're gonna get the change log, like for example, this, uh, the one I have in Exophane here. I did those minor no additions, like addition changes fixes. This is my additions, but essentially it's just like a tag with the version and your commits. So this is how I roll with it essentially. But um, you know, I there's probably other tools, but they work fine for me. 
Oh, not to publish code and other mess in NPM. Um, I would recommend setting up. So basically, before you publish everything, right, you want to check what's actually going in there. And there is a command for that, which I don't remember. <laughs> so we are um, going to go to the documentation and try to remember what the hell was it. Um, I mean, maybe we can as well do NPM help. Uh, actually should increase the size probably so you guys can see a bit bigger because the console is kind of tiny. Um, maybe close this and there is NPM. Oh boy, what was it? Um, PM pack, I think. Was it NPM pack? I think it was NPM pack. Yeah, there you go. So if you run NPM pack, you will see the tarball contents. It will actually show you what's going to be in the tarball. And then you can configure. Um, where is the package JSON? So you can actually configure what kind of things do you want to include in there, right? So in our case, um, there's a bunch of ways of doing that, but I think the best way is to do, I think it's called files. Yes. And in our case, it's literally like lib index.js, right? And we want lib index DTS. This is what we include. Uh, no, that's not lib, that's source index DTS. And I guess for TypeScript projects, it makes sense to include source, index, uh, source file as well. I mean, it's not that big anyway. And I think that's basically all we want because we don't really care about the other files, right? If we pack it now, you're going to see that, okay, now we actually only include three files and the tar file, like tar size is like, you know, a ton smaller. So this is what, essentially what you want to do. I kill that tar zip. We don't need it anymore. So we talked about that. Um, how to check published files. Yeah, there you go. I mean, you can check already published files, obviously, but I would suggest using the pack command to check it locally. There is unpackage, which is super nice and essentially allows you to check the contents of any NPM package using versions as well. So there's the, here's what ExaFrame package uh, publishes. And as you can see here, there's like includes literally everything. I probably should also edit that and not include some of those things, but uh, they are not critical, so it's not that large. Okay, um, how to deploy demo page using GitHub pages. Um, that's literally like on GitHub documentation. I don't think that's worth spending time on, but essentially you just create a GitHub pages branch and put an index HTML in there and that's it. So uh, you can't, wait a second. I had like, I had to set up somewhere. Uh, let me try to remember it. I had a setup in one of the repositories that did that automatically. So basically it took, oh yeah, I think it was, it was one of the, where is my profile? I think it was like a RxMQ or something. Uh, yes, I should probably update it as well. Uh, was it, or was it Rx Microwork maybe? Yes, I think it was, no, it wasn't micro work. Was it RxMQ? Uh, where's the branches? Yes, 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 it was this. And we have the Travis was, oh no, we, we have the worker config. And there was, yeah, there was this recipe that basically just did it for you. You just provide a GitHub token that is always, I think Travis also have this, Travis GitHub pages. I think they probably even have like a release thing for it. Get up page. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so they have the pages provider for deployment where you can just uh, execute something and then on specific branch, you can just, you know, push the needed files to the, to the pages. So it's like nothing, it's not a rocket science basically. How to configure a GitHub repo to allow community to grow and work with minimum administrations. Um, that does not sound realistic to be honest. Like a community is not something that grows on its own, right? However good your tool is, you will have to work for it to grow anyway. And if it grows, if you have a community, you will not get away with minimum administration. Like the only thing you can get is just pass on the thing to the um, other 
you know pass the governance to other people but somebody have to administrate it so it doesn't doesn't work like this unfortunately uh should i use typescript from a library well that's up to you like it works fine with it it works fine without it so it's like you know wh which one do you want typescript is really good when you want like 100 percent foolproof projects let's put it this way so you you have to be 100 percent sure it's not gonna break then you can you know have, have typescript have 100 percent test coverage have a lot of test cases and you know that's gonna give you more safety essentially <coughs> apologies um do i need type definitions well if you're writing typescript then yes i would say yes what's the point of having a typescript project without type definitions how to demo well github pages as you said is a good example and documentation generated um well there's a bunch of approaches for docs <coughs> apologies so there's more than one approach to the documentation one obviously is to have a comments and then generate something it works relatively fine but it you know it never kind of feels good because it's not a human written so human written always works better i think especially if you take you know additional care to make it understandable easy and uh nice to navigate in general and if we're talking about the react components then uh, we now have the mdx which is super nice which basically allows you to write documentation for react components with markdown so you literally can write markdown and then insert the react component in there and it just works it's like just like literally look at this <laughs> this is incredible and then even have like live refresh and everything so if you're writing docs then look at, look at this this is kind of awesome can you quick publish and try to use the new modules? Sure, we can do that. Uh, so let's just look at the last point. We got contributing guidelines. I think it's always nice to have those, but you know, like what they should be is basically up to you because it's your project. But uh, yeah, I typically have stuff like, you know, you please use ESLint, please use uh, Prettier to format it, please run all the tests and stuff like this, you know, and uh, I don't know, submit pull requests against the develop branch. So yeah, okay, uh, yes, let us publish this. I also probably should have committed a lot more than I did, but I, man, I always on the live streams forget to commit things. Okay, we need to, first of all, ignore a bunch of things. Git ignore, uh, echo uh, dist into git ignore. What? Oh. God damn it, I forgot the line break. Okay, uh, we don't need library in the repo as well, right? Because there's a generated thing, git ignore. And I think we are good. So let's just add all of that. That looks fine, that looks fine, that looks fine. Typings, maybe we don't, oh yeah, we, first of all, Typings, we don't need that. DRM typings index DTS. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, I guess we. No, I mean, it's probably a good idea to commit typings. That's a good question. Is it a good practice to commit typings in TypeScript community? Like uh, TypeScript, React, library. Is there are good examples of TypeScript, React, library, boilerplate. There we go. Okay, so do you. Okay, so they do commit typings, I guess, right? Okay, let's commit the typings. Get commit, sell initial commit. Um, no, not yet. We need a readme md, uh, which I am always super lazy about writing, which is not a good thing, but but yeah, that's how it works. Okay, uh, let me just steal readme from one of the previous projects because why not? Uh, whoops, that is too much. So simple React component made with TypeScript and Babel and Parcel. <laughs> made with, um, okay, TypeScript, Babel and Parcel. Let's put it this way. Simple React component, uh, simple React. Let's just expand it a bit. Simple React Pomodoro timer uh, made with, um, yeah, component, I guess, makes sense. Made with TypeScript 
and Babel and compiled with parcel. Clone repo, npm install, npm start for demo and development, npm run builds for a production ready build. Can be found in uh, lib. Uh, let's call it local setup and then um using component is what we also have to document right uh add component component blah, 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 to your project via um, npm install uh in package json typings should be okay uh we'll add this in a second npm install so what's our package name okay uh let me just do that so you said there should be a typings thing right whoops that is too much typings okay let me have a look typescript package json typings uh publishing there we go like the docs for TypeScript are amazing. This is like really cool. Types, okay, this is what we want. So it's not typing, it's types. And it should be source, right? Index DTS, this is what we want. Okay, cool. We added that. NPM install, uh, and I forgot to, <laughs> it's like I went to do one thing and then completely forgot what I was doing. Um, import timer import and use timer like so import pomodoro from and um export default we're just gonna export arrow components diff pom pomodoro I, I guess we don't, we don't even need a div here. There you go, done. Okay, um, let's just make sure that this actually looks fine. Do, 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 do. Yep, that looks okay. Okay, so we got the readme, ignore, got the package JSON, got the index, got everything. Okay, um, get add package JSON. So we need to commit that, get commits add type type types to package json uh, what come on get add readme okay. wait did i just screwed up yes god damn it okay I initial comments rename it comment oh, come on Okay, and uh, yes, okay, so we got everything. Now, um, we actually need to publish it on GitHub. That's also a good idea. <laughs> so package JSON, let's first publish it to GitHub, then we'll publish it to the NPM. And then we try to pull it in and or maybe we can we can even try to use it online in like code sandbox or whatever. Uh, brr, 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 index, uh, simple react component. Simple React Pomodoro Timer component. No, you know what? Let's just copy the whole thing. Because why the hell not? Buzzery. So we can close all of that and then we can just uh, copy this stuff, paste it here, push origin master. Uh, right. My SSH keys. Amen. Okay, cool. So we published this on GitHub. That's now fine. Now npm just to make sure that everything is fine. I am slightly paranoid about that. And let's do it from the Windows side to make sure that it actually does what it's supposed to do. Okay, so I got index. Yes, we got index. Oh, you know what did I? Yes, this should be this right because ah, yes. So it actually should point no, this is actually source. So this okay. And yep, that is this is what we want. Okay, now it is correct. Uh, okay, rmbxjs thing gets 
just uh, yeah and fix main um, script in package JSON. Uh, come on, sign it already. God damn it. Hit push. Okay. Uh, theoretically, if we do npm publish right now, am I even logged in npm here? npm why do you have to be like this oh boy operation not permitted uh, okay kill that create a new instance pm publish are you gonna work now operation was rejected by operating system why local temp npm operation not permitted okay you know what let's try it from this side npm publish from vsl are you gonna work Oh, I'm not okay. npm login. I can log in. Yeah, uh, hell if I remember my password. Here's my npm password. Copy passwords. Paste here. Enter. Uh, Yamalight at gmail.com. This is public. I know. Oh, oh yeah, right. I have, I have OTP as well. And you should too if you still don't have it. Uh, okay, where's my npm? npm, npm, where are you? There you go. Okay, um, one, six, seven, okay. And we are logged in. Okay, npm publish. Let's try this again. Can you please work finally? Ta da! Okay, so now we can go to like code sandbox. And uh, where's like React, React project, and edit in code sandbox, right? And we're gonna add a dependency. It's gonna be our uh, BXJS React component. It's gonna be <laughs> completely broken now and not gonna work. Hey, there we go. It's here. So we forked it. Did, did you add it? Yes. Okay. So we're now gonna import po Pomodoro from and uh, like this and Pomodoro and it is probably no the JavaScript is but where's my stuff why is it not showing anything by the way ad block is it because of you okay seems to be working now hey it works Hey, <laughs> perfect. Are you actually working? Let's wait for a couple of seconds and ta-da. There you go. From start to end, publishing a thing on uh, NPM. Did I actually push it? Um, did I push everything? Yes, I did. Okay, cool. Right, um, that's basically it. So we did everything that was needed to be done if you guys have any questions do send them over into chat right now if you um pr proposal if you want to see me build something or talk about something do submit proposals to the proposals repo uh, you can also vote on the submitted proposals using the um emotes thingies and basically i am gonna do this once a week so we're typically doing it on wednesdays but today is thursday because i was busy yesterday um so yeah code is published here close this i'm gonna publish the video once it's done yeah thank you for staying with me and thank you for all your helpful tips and again sorry about betting you that was not intentional <laughs> Oh man, why does it Twitch puts like a ban button literally over here? It is so easy to ban someone when copying text. It is incredible. <laughs> okay. Um, oh yeah. Right. Doesn't seem like there's any more questions or anything else. So let's just uh, call it a day for today. Thank you guys very much for watching me code and watching me struggle with the TypeScript. Thank you very much for all your tips and hints and... Uh, all the things that you basically helped me achieve today. 
Hope you enjoyed the stream and yeah, don't forget to vote for your proposals, for your favorite ones, submit your own and I see you um, either on BXGS Weekly on Saturday or next week. Bye.